Hello, my name is Brendan and uh, welcome to our little video series called The Church Has Left the Building. Um, why? Well, because the church has left the building. We're not able to meet during lockdown, um, but we're very much still being church and agents of the kingdom in our homes, our workplaces and our communities around the city. Um, lockdown has isolated us from each other and this is an attempt to share some of those stories and testimonies to hear what different people in our congregation are doing, how they're involved, the challenges they've faced, where they've seen God at work and what they've been encouraged by. And I hope and pray that this will be an encouragement to you as uh, we continue to be the church outside of the building. So I've got uh, John Gilmore with me today, who is, he described himself mainly as a fundraiser apparently, but he's also the uh, a fund, uh, the uh, founder and uh, director of um, Leap Schools, um, and there are how many? Nine, six? There's six, six schools. Yeah, in four different provinces. Yeah, so six schools in four different provinces, um, and I think he's been very busy in the last uh, two weeks as uh, schools have been heading back and trying to get ready uh, for for this new situation in COVID. Um, but I was just going to ask John to to share a bit about some of the work that you're involved in, and I think you've got a nifty PowerPoint presentation and a video. So we're going to see if the screen share works. Well, thank you very much for for making me the first guinea pig in this process. I'm very keen to be that. I think that uh, this time of the last few months has really put our faith under scrutiny, and I think uh, it's been a very introspective time. And it's a time which has cemented, for me, my calling. And my calling has really been to, to serve through action with children in marginalized communities. And because of the gifts I've been given as a white man and as a privileged white man, and the insight that I've been given through special uh, opportunities created by history and God, um, I've, it's become very clear to me, we have to change the way we do teaching and learning. Mm. So let me just share that briefly with you through a little bit of a structured presentation, and then we can pick up after that. Great. Let's see if the screen share works. Ta -da. Yeah. So the Leap Science and Math School is really a set of six schools focused on the notion of self-liberation. You know, in 1994, we had a political uh, resolve, but we didn't have an economic one, and we didn't have an emotional re resolution. We never came to an emotional settlement. And so for me, the colonial model of education continues to use power as a primary tool. And so the Leap Science and Math Schools are schools set apart for children from broken spaces, uh, township communities and rural spaces, to actually take charge of their own lives and to embrace their own holistic development, which includes, of course, the spiritual dimension, to advance and to free themselves. And the context that we work in is intentionally in spaces which are the underserved spaces and the spaces which often get referred to as spaces from which a lost, another lost generation will come. We, we do believe that the most powerful weapon in the hands of the oppressor is the mind of the oppressed, and we've never really addressed the healing that is needed in order to resolve that reality of what internalized oppression looks like and what the internalized oppressor can be. So Leap Space is my personal space too for my own journey, God-driven and God-inspired and sometimes God-beaten to to actually mm. work hard at surrendering on a daily basis and unlearning, which is of course so difficult when you are taught as a young person that you are special in some way. Yeah. We work with a very new met methodology where we work a lot in circles, we call them healing circles, and we have our children's voices activated in those circles. We have 1,600 children across the six schools. We have about 65% of them are girls. We have a rural urban split, and bear in mind that, you know, we're trying to counter the reality that before 1994, maths and science were the, the domain that was legislated as special for white people and black people were not uh, given access to the same curriculum. 
we try and tap into the African heroes, the African leaders of the past, so that we can actually talk about a key element of education being the development of an authentic voice, willing to speak truth to power. And for that voice to be real, it has to be grounded. It has to be grounded in a cultural reality. It has to be grounded in self-acceptance. It has to be grounded in faith. And it has to be grounded in mastery and a strong sense of belonging. We work in our communities with a head, heart and hands uh, approach. And this is uh, some photographs on the top left and bottom from uh, our school in Limpopo, where we have a small farm that the children work in. And of course, we accompany that with agricultural science. And the whole idea is to immerse our children in the connection between the head and the heart and the hands. And the heart is at the center of it for us. Mm. What COVID-19 has begun to show us is that whatever Maslow said about the hierarchy of needs has changed and that Wi-Fi is no longer a, a privilege. It now needs to be considered a basic human right. Mm. And really we should be very direct about that because it, the digital divide, the global digital divide really is being exaggerated by access, access to technology. And the gap between schools with privileged uh, access and the schools that, where children don't have access has just in the last three months widened and the complexities of that are still to unfold. We've used our schools during this time as a place for food collection. We've made sure that uh, our schools are conduits for donations. We've had donations from organizations like the Lunchbox Fund, HCI, and so on. Timber Bavuma, The Cricketer, Stain City, Dane Fern, Rotary. And we're very proud that our children are not just involved as recipients, but involved as part of uh, changing their own communities and serving their own communities. And service is a very important part of our work. We've also been recognizing that where children don't have access to a cell phone, it makes schooling of any sort impossible. So we've worked very hard at raising money to ensure that the children who don't have cell phones, we can actually purchase those and also supply a basic supply of data to liberate those children to be able to take charge of their own learning. We do walk with people like Professor John Formunk, a great man of faith and a great leader of education in our country in integrating the values of Ubuntu, the humanity elements of African philosophy that say, regardless of the origin and the nationality, people belong to a single community and this global identity needs to be developed, which in a summary could also be we're all God's children and need to understand that at the deepest possible level. Mm. So we do see that education is the key with love at the center. And love is part of a curriculum at LEAP. And love needs to be part of the curriculum. Love and, love and justice it was Martin Luther King who said that justice without love is cruelty and love without justice is sentiment. Mm. And really education needs to focus on the balance between love and justice, just as we have to do in our families and to be honest, just as we need to do in our church, we need to understand. And I'm so proud, Brendan, of the work we're doing to accommodate people in our church and to, to turn our, our building into a life center, which is so much more helpful in the current context than just mm -hmm. being a safe, safe retreat yeah. for us on, on a Sunday. So yeah. uh, I really have to commend that. And really the goal is to develop global citizens who, who know how to speak truth to power and who are grounded and do have integrity and values and faith in their, in their, uh, in their being. Mm. I just want to play a little uh, video of a young woman. We, we ran a little video competition during lockdown and we asked our children to make videos to say how they're coping, what matters to them in this time of, uh, of lockdown. Hello everyone. Today I'm telling you how I'm going to deal with coronavirus. For hygiene purposes, I use my home hand sanitizer more often and avoid biting my nails or touching my face regularly. For brain exercise and anxiety, I pray as form as meditation because I'm scared of this virus. For keeping my immune system strong, I eat food rich in vitamin C like lemons, papaya, and strawberries. Accountability is the most important too, as I know that I must stay indoors to prevent COVID-19. 
I am much coming used to stay updated and try new things. I want to study online so that I can catch up quickly. I decided to obey Mr. President's rules that say, stay safe, save life, and stay at home. Thanks. So that's just a little share of that we had 400 about 450 video entrants just oh, wow. young people using their cell phones trying to integrate trying to be creative from very difficult spaces and mm -hmm. the optimism and the beauty and the faith reflected in that little account for me is something i wanted to share nice, so nice. i you know i just share that with you and and ask that the chs community please pray for the leap family we we're a family of We've been going since 2004. We've got over 2,000 uh, graduates. 95% of them have gone to, have got through, you know, through school and have had access to university. And we have a big throughput. Three of our six schools are led by children who were in the first class in 2004. So we, we have three principals who are graduates of the school oh, wow. and now lead the school. And, and faith, while it's not um, overtly presented in our curriculum, because we're, uh, we're very open and, and loving and caring. It's in, in action that, that God's work is to be found. Uh, it is part of what we, we hope for and pray for for our children. Yeah. And of course, uh, LEAP is founded on the notion that every black child matters. And in our strange country, we have a strange notion that poor black children are less important than rich children. And uh, it's something we have to fight. So that's just Thank a little bit of a, yeah. No, it's really uh, lovely to see um, some of what um, you're involved in. I kind of hear about it from afar, but it's lovely yeah. to see some of the pictures. And um, yeah. and here, I have to say, it's really wonderful. It's a it's a very bold vision, I have to say, yeah. of um, of of this new. I was really struck by what you were saying about needing to unlearn. Um, and I was wondering if there were some specific things that you felt that. Um, as, as, a, as a community, we need to unlearn at the moment? Well, I think as a CHS community, we need to unlearn our assumptions about what is community. We really have to dig deep into yeah. understanding that the community is not an option. You know, it's not something we define by looking on maps, which is mm -hmm. historically how the colonial powers did it in Africa. And we, we live with that kind of self uh, claimed right to think that we define community community who's who's ever is in our space yeah. and whose ever space we share and of course when you've got these strange boundaries like we do have in our in our own immediate community uh, that's an important thing and I, I think the other unlearning which you've been so bold about and again I commend you for that is the unlearning the notion that the church is somehow implicitly defined by the building and maybe this is the best time because we were about, we are about to build a big life center. Yeah. And, um, and the relief that I feel in that is yes, but it's going to be a life center. <laughs> you know, it's not going to be a church. Yeah. It is a church, but it's the people who make it a church. It's not the building that defines itself as a church. Yeah. And I'm always reminded about the European cities where the only time people are in the cathedrals is when they're there as tourists. And the church, the church building has lost its spiritual role. Mm. It's become it's become an aesthetic object. What tragedy that really represents. Yeah. Now look, I think it's a, it's a huge challenge. I think, like you say, to redefine the place of church because we yeah. used to, under Christendom, have a privileged position, and yeah. um, we no longer have. And actually, on what basis do we have? Um, a right to speak to the world at the moment. And I think it's a, it feels like an exciting space to be in because it feels like God's opening up, opening up new opportunities with things. Um, some of what you, just in terms of education as well, I do feel like it, it feels like such a huge issue in our country um, yeah. where it remains so unequal. And you were talking about this, um, this growing global digital divide um, yeah. and, and it feels like in this context with COVID, actually, it's, it's highlighted that so much. You know, my, my children are privileged enough to go to a school where they, their teachers have moved online and they send us work and we're, we, we have a, we've got a, a device or something at home that we can use to do it on. Um, and so conscious of many other children in, in our church community who don't have that. 
um, and are unable to, to, to get online and stay in touch with work? Um, well, you know, I think we problematize poverty in a way that we never do it for other things. And so we look at that and say it, it's tragic and it is, but what's the solution? The solution is scrap textbooks and give everybody a cell phone, you know, mm -hmm. the start of next, next year, schools should be issuing cell phones and data and, it, and, and everything can be acquired. You know, you can find information for goodness sake, you know, the gateway is, is all you need. And we have found that once we, once we flip that thinking to saying our children can't use shame, they've only got a cell phone, that was, that was a poor assumption. Our children are very excited about having that cell phone yeah. and are incredibly adept and adaptive using that cell phone. And so we have found our online learning through WhatsApp is good enough, frankly. And instead of the country always imagining you've got to buy a laptop for everybody, just make sure we have access to cell phones. And I do believe there should be a campaign nationwide for free data for, for schools. Yeah. So that if we did those two things, put a cell phone in every child's hand and gave them free data. Would that's make a good a start. Fun. Yeah, make a, a good start. I think you're so right, because I think so often we start as well. And I think, um, especially in South Africa, it, it feels like this huge mountain we sometimes yeah. face with issues. Yeah. Um, and it can be so intimidating that it feels like, how can I possibly, um, and what I love about that is it feels like it's a very simple way of saying, actually, well, what can we do? We, if, if we do this, then there's potential. And government is spending, you know, on average, nearly 20,000 Rand per child at school. Mm. And the budget for learning materials and uh, textbooks and so on is probably quite close to 1,500 Rand a child. So the solution isn't an extra cost. It's just a, re, a reapportionment of cost. Of what is, and, is existing. Yeah, and then the pressure, the pressure. So it's, you know, the solutions must be cost effective. We can't just say we must, the government must find more money. We know that that's going to be more difficult. Mm -hmm. So I do think as Christians and as leaders uh, in this world, we, we need to keep ourselves unlearning we assume, and being pragmatic in our application of solutions, you know and engage with it and try things. And, and my experience is that you can trust people to liberate, you know, they will liberate themselves when, they've, when they're trusted. Mm -hmm. and, and you can't liberate anybody, I can't liberate anybody, just as you cannot get anybody to be a Christian. Um, it's a personal journey. Well, learning is, learning is like that too. Yeah. Um. John, two things just as we as we finish up, and and I suppose that's uh, one is is what can we be praying for, especially for those who are concerned about the educational space. Uh, what can yeah. we be praying for, and what secondly for people who might want to get involved or saying what what can we do? Yeah. You've, you've had some suggestions. What can we pray for, and what can we do? Yeah, well, I think the prayers are really for the safety of our children. I mean, that's the first that you know, not just leap children, but leap children could represent a focus for your prayers. Yeah. Uh, because they are in difficult spaces, uh, places like Dipslot, uh, Harankur, Alexander Township, Langa, Philippi, Younger, and uh, Jane First in Limpopo. So, so just for their safety. And you know, since lockdown was li lifted on alcohol, there's been a spate of violence in the communities, and one of our children was gunned down on the weekend and and killed. Um, and that's very painful. You know, the the notion of the shepherd and that one sheep, uh, you know, going out after that one sheep, you you severely feel a, a severe loss, as you can imagine, yeah. as the family must do. Sure. So, pray for the safety, and uh, also for just the discernment, you know, for the leaders mm. as to what matters and what and how to how to deal with this constant need to adapt. Mm. And then, as that you introduced me as the fundraiser. <laughs> funding pray for the sustainability you know yeah. this is work is expensive work we have to raise it and uh, if people have any ideas on that i'd love to hear from them yeah no great thank you so much thank you for your time i know you i know you're a, a busy man with all that, that fundraising that you you, yeah. you need to do um yeah. let me just pray for us as we pray for you as we yeah. as we close thank you. Yeah. 
Appreciate yeah, it. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you so much um, for John. I want to thank you for each one of those schools, Lord, and uh, for how they're a bit of a picture of your kingdom and trying to, to change a situation, Lord God. Uh, we want to pray for your blessing on them. Um, I pray for your blessing on their leadership teams, their teachers. Uh, we pray for each one of the, the students, Lord God, um, for those who are whose home environments and communities may not be safe. We pray for safety, Lord God. Um, and we do pray that you would raise up um, a generation, Father God, um, that can truly be free, Father. We ask this in your name. Amen. Amen.